Welcome to the Merly End. I'm Dominic Machado, and I am joined today by Estelle Vasudevan and Anton Rue, our special guest. Um, of course, what we're going to be talking about tonight is the disastrous loss against Bangladesh. We're going to assess what went wrong, um, what they can do better, and if Sri Lanka still have a chance to qualify. Um, so, Anton, I'm going to come to you first. Having been in that locker room recently, can you tell us a little bit how the, the boys must have been feeling in the lead up to this game, especially given their rivalry with Bangladesh? Uh, I would hope that they would have felt a, a sense of nervousness because it means it shows that you obviously care about the game. But at the same time, I, I would have thought that they would have been pumped, you know, to get out there and uh, get their campaign off to to, to a good start, uh, especially with beating Bangladesh. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out for them today. So I can tell you now that change room is going to be very quiet and and uh, a, a tough place to be. But, you know, that's professional sport and you've got to learn how to deal with these things. So, Estelle, watching that game, I'm, I'm still a bit shell-shocked. I'm trying to gather some of my thoughts. What were your t key takeaways from the Sri Lankan batting innings? And we'll turn to the bowling innings in, in the later part. Yeah, I thought they started off really well. The intent from Patum Nisanka was superb right from the word go, right? Uh, from the first over, he was on the attack. Kusal Mendes also, again, the intent was there. I think he got caught between two shots uh, with his dismissal. But then from that point, I think Sri Lanka 52 or 54 in the first six overs. From that point, I felt like it was more about, you know, the, the game against South Africa was in their heads where they were bowled out cheaply. And there was a bit of hesitancy to go after the bowling and more, more of an attempt to stay in and not like lose all your wickets within the 20 overs, which I thought in, on this service was not a good plan in the sense that, you know, in the pre, in, in New York, everything was happening, right? Off the track, ball was bouncing, it was keeping low, it was spinning. Um, you couldn't tell what was happening. In that sense, in, in that kind of condition, being cautious is one thing. But in, on a track like what we saw today, where there had been good scores leading up to the game, as well as how Patum started, I felt like that intent was really lacking. And I do think, to be honest, the game was lost between that sixth and the 10th over. Yeah, um, that sixth and the 10th over is, is the overs where Patum got out and then where you have um, DDS and Kamindu getting out as well. No, Kamindu got out in the power play, but you have DDS and Charith coming together or to, to bat for a little while. Anton, do you see? Do you chalk this period of uh, the sixth to the tenth over to Bangladesh bowling well, or errors on the Sri Lankan part, as Estelle said? There was it a lack of intent, or did Bangladesh really do a good job in containing the Sri Lankan batters there? I think uh, you know. Again, this is just my humble opinion from watching as a fan, but. I think the the uh, surprise package uh, or the guy that sort of turned the put the brakes on for us big time was Hussein because he started turning the ball and I think you know having looked at some of the previous games that that wicket seems to be playing went very well and they were reasonably high scoring games but he came on and and, and ripped the first ball past the bat you know and uh, I think that sort of puts yeah. a little bit of doubt into the batter's minds about okay we can't take the spinner on anymore so how are we going to go about our innings there and then absolutely what Estelle said I think you know, regardless of how professional you are as a team, uh, your previous results against Africa is always in the back, uh, back of your mind. Um, mm -hmm. And then we started entering that those muddy waters of around what's a good score, how are we going to go about it? And absolutely, I think from from that period on, from, from when Hussein came on, and, and credit to him, he bowled really, really well. And he actually, he, he bowled really well against us um, in the Bangladesh series as well. So, mm. You know, from that point onwards, I thought that's where the breaks uh, came on and um, we couldn't quite get out of that that rut, to be fair. Right, right. So um, Hussein comes on, I think, maybe for the second part of his spell in the 14th over. And Sri Lanka are sitting OK at 100 for three. They've got, um, you know, six overs to play. You think, OK, maybe 160 is on the cards. But bang, bang, first two wickets go down. Charith tries to slog sweep him. And then one, he follows Wanindu, and Wanindu edges to slip there. And that really did turn the game. They only ended up scoring 24 off those last six overs, which is extremely poor. Um, 
and you think the way that they bowl tonight, 160 would have been good enough to get you there. Um, maybe not against some other teams, but against this Bangladesh side, 160 might have been good enough to get you there. Um, Estelle, what do you think, sort of big picture, this tell the, this batting performance tells you about the Sri Lankan side? That's a tough one to answer because I feel like we've seen this kind of performance before. I think it's really uh, valid coming from Anton in the sense of, you know, how it plays on your mind because he's been in that setup. And I think that is a massive factor with this batting lineup in that we saw it in the ODI World Cup as well, right? Where after a couple of losses, how they came out against South Africa, how they blasted away chasing 400. And then once you see one failure or two failures, then it's back to that kind of fearful cricket where you don't want to lose your wicket, right? And that's what we saw in the middle overs, right? Mm. By the time it came to the death, I feel like there was, yeah, they didn't do well in the last six overs, but I felt like by that time, that idea of, okay, is the, is the pitch really doing so much? Is, mm. is Are there demons in this track? Should we be looking for 140 instead of 160? All of those things are working in their minds, right? Um, so that came into play a lot. Whereas like if they were playing confidently, if one of those guys had gone, either Charit or DDS, had got a few boundaries under their belt. I think when Matthews hit a four in the 18th or 19th over, that was the first boundary in 43 deliveries, right? Um, So that plays a massive part in what they think is possible. It's like, I mean, if you think back to the game against um, Hyderabad, Hyderabad LSG game at the IPL, right? Where um, I think LSG struggled to get like 160 or 140 or something like that, a kind of a, which everyone thought was a par total. And then Mm -hmm. Sunrisers just chased it down in 10 overs, right? So, I think a lot of it is to do with how they're thinking and, you know, not being certain of, I think, in a sense, their skills as well and what they're capable of and what the rest of the batting order is capable capable of. Because if you look at it, everyone, a lot of people were talking about how, okay, having eight batters means yep. that then that gives the top order freedom to go after the bowling, right? But we haven't seen that. So what is it that what is the messaging that needs to go to the batting lineup? What do they need to do? Because like you said, as we saw with that bowling attack, they can, I mean, they can make even a completely under par total look defendable, right? And they did that today. But that batting, what is the mindset? What is the messaging that needs to go to them is something I think the the coaching setup and everyone involved in the leadership, they've got mentors, they've got a lot of high performance coaches, from the lower levels coming in, right? How do you fix that is going to be the big issue. Hmm. Yeah, and you think you look at um, how Sri Lanka wins, it's when Patham or Kusal go big, right? When your openers go big, they do well, right? But if it's, okay, we need to rebuild and reset, they tend to struggle. And, you know, we were talking about about boundary count, right? Um, 48 balls face from Asalanka and DDS, and we have two boundaries, right? That's just not acceptable in, in T20 cricket. And I think one of the things you have to think, and I think we saw this with Tauhid Ridai in the, ch- in the chase, is you have to make the bowler change their plans, right? They, you can't let them bowl to you. If they bowl to you and they're bowling how they want, you've got to do something to throw them off their line, to throw them off their length. They cannot repeat the same ball over and over and over again and get good results. So I thought there was a lack of inventiveness there. And um, I think you're right, Estelle. We're we're dedicating these extra resources to bowlers, to sorry, to batters. We have eight batters in the side, supposedly, right? And that means that we're not playing an excellent bowler who could make a difference, right? Who could have been bowling one of those last two overs. Um, Anton, so could you talk a little bit more about this mentality here and what it's like in the middle? Um, and, and what do you think, sort of from a mentality perspective, the Sri Lankan cricketers need to work on? Because as you know, they're incredibly talented. They have all the skill sets to do what we want them to do. What kind of things can they do to take sort of charge of the game when they need to? Well, look, I mean, it's a great question. Look, uh, I think uh, before you, we dive into the, the, the nitty gritties around it, um, I think what people need to also understand is that it's, it's easy for us <clears throat> to sit on the sideline, <clears throat> excuse me, 
and say they should have had more intent or they should have done this or they should have done that. I mean, those got, those are the guys that are out there. They feeling the weight of the nation on their pre, on their shoulders, um, as we've seen in this World Cup already. Not just the Sri Lanka game, but as soon as you put anyone under a little bit of pressure, doesn't matter who you are, your game plan needs to be rock solid. Otherwise, you get you get found out, right? So, I think we we, we can't under um, <clears throat> understate the the pressure that Sri Lanka is under, especially having lost to South Africa, especially playing against uh, Bangladesh. Um, you add in the 70 all out. Now, are they going to go even harder or are they going to play circumspect? So all those mm. things come into play, right? So that's that's a mindset uh, uh, perspective. From a game plan perspective, you know, uh, again, we can all sit here and we can come up with excuses or, or ideas for the guys to, to work on. What I can say is a guy like Patham, for example, um, you know, a couple of seasons ago, everyone was complaining about his or talking about his strike rate. Um, I think, you know, that guy is an unbelievable cricketer. He works hard at his game. He's added in a few reverse sweeps to, his, to yeah. his game. So from that perspective, guys like that are definitely working on their game and they're trying to take it forward. Uh, a guy like Camino Mendes came in and has been a breath of fresh air for the squad. Unfortunately, he didn't come off today. I think that we relied heavily on him in the... Um, Afghanistan, Zimbabwe, and Bangladesh series, where he, you know, he carried the momentum forward, which helped us as a team. And it's just unfortunately today it didn't it didn't go our way. But I think the most um, disappointing thing, and I think Estelle touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, and again, it's a it's a mixture of what happened in the previous game um, and the history with our batting lineup. But it just seems like, you know, if we have eight batters in the side, let's go, let's go hard. And if and if and if we get bowled out for 120, going really hard or being really super positive, then you know that's our brand of cricket that we that that we play. Um, as we saw with like uh, Sunrisers Hyderabad in the, in the IPL, that you know they took the game to a completely new level. And unfortunately, in the in the game where it mattered, they 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 came up short, but they played that brand of cricket. So. Is it a? I think it's a mixture of of the pressure. I think it's a mixture of our brand of of, of cricket. I think it's a, it's a mixture of what's our what's our preferred lineup, what's our preferred balance of mm -hmm. the team. All those things have a knock on effect of what we see in the end product on the field. You know, yeah. um, but make no mistake, the players work extremely hard in in. Um, in working on their games in trying to take the game forward so i don't think it's 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 got anything to do with that i think it's a combination of 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 outside influences that can potentially get into your mind which then your game plan under pressure if it's not absolutely clear you're going to struggle right right and i think that point about game plan right like this is the brand of cricket we play is so important right we saw how well england did in after the 2015 World Cup and rebuilding their side where we, they said, OK, everyone's just going to have a go, whether we get, get bowled out for 110 or we score 350, doesn't matter. Um, and we see some players seeming to receive a message of try and score fast, right? Potham see, uh, seems to have received that. Kusal seems to have received that. And I think it's sort of like that 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 we don't want to have a disaster so let's change our plan midway through the innings yeah. as opposed let, to let's keep on going yeah go ahead Anton. yeah no sorry don but you know again like uh i think it's heavily driven from social media and from what mm. the players think the the public perceives them you know you can't you, you can and once you go down that road you can never win because from a fan's yeah. perspective you're either always going too hard or you're being too circumspect right so again i i, I come back to what is our brand of cricket? We mm. stick to it for an extended period of time and you review it after, say, a year or two and you go, is there anything that we need to yeah. change? Can we bring something in? Do we need to tweak the lineup here and there? But uh, 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 as soon as those things, as soon as you open up yourself to other people's opinions and, and, and you, you know, there's, there's, a, there's always a huge talk around selection. There's always a huge talk around what we would have done if I was in that, you know, as soon as you open yourself up to that, I think that portrays itself out on the field. Yeah. I'm not saying it did this time, but it can. So, yeah. you know, coming around back to my, my answer again, it's just as a, as a group, you need to be very tight in terms of what you allow yeah. in and, and what 
you allow to get in the way of your of your game plan. So, and I can't really comment on that because I'm not there at the moment. But yeah. I can tell you that uh, uh, the world, you know, the world of social media with podcasts and 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 and, and uh, Twitter and all that sort of stuff. It's it's tough nowadays um, to hide away from the criticism. You know? mm -hmm. And some of it's good, absolutely. Um, at the end of the day, the more the more exposure you get, the, the better, I suppose. But as a professional cricketer and as a as a national team, you need to be very, very airtight about who you let in and what sort of messages you let in, regardless of the criticism that you get to stick to your game plan and your brand of cricket. So that if the ship goes down, we can all look at each other in the face and go, well, that's what we agreed upon to play. Yeah. And we're happy to go down. Anton, I yeah. think that perspective. Oh, go ahead, Estelle, go for it. Yeah, I was going to say that is... I think absolutely like spot on for Anton because you do see, I don't know how different it is in countries outside the subcontinent, right? But you do get a lot of stuff coming into players. You, know? you get, I'm, and I'm not just talking about like people like us doing podcasts or journalists or the media, social media, whatever. From past cricketers, I mean, at the moment, every TV channel in Sri Lanka has a different panel of past cricketers with their post-match, pre-match game shows, right? And there's a lot of messaging coming through that, right? And if you do go to take in everything, and you might say, okay, Sanan Jasuri has won a World Cup or Mahila Javadhan has won a World Cup or whatever. But if you take everything that's coming your way from everyone who wants to offer you advice, you're never going to be clear about what you want to do in the game, right? So I think that's massively important about being like having your plans and kind of you have to find a way to block out what's, I mean, obviously it's not possible to do it 100%, but you have to find a way to kind of stick to that mm. and understand that this is what you are you are trying to do yeah. and go with that. Like, I mean, the, the, the you know, if you're going to go hard, that's your plan, right? That is the way you play. And I think most people would understand that if you have a team that is, intent heavy and is looking to go after the bowling like say a sunrisers right there are going to be days when you're going to be bowled out for 80 or 90 and there are going to be days where you're going to make 220 right and that's that's the kind of i think steadfastness that needs to come in in that if you if you put a plan in place and you have certain strategies in place you have to give it time to work as well right you can't say okay this world cup we bombed uh, trying to go i mean this world cup game we bombed trying to show a lot of intent up early. So we're going to change things up in the next game. And, and sorry, so I think, like I think that, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, without me getting into, you know, the headlines of Sri Lanka cricket here by saying this is what they did right or wrong. I'm just talking from a coach's perspective yeah. uh, of, of, of how I see things and having been in similar environments like that in the past is showing intent has, has various different uh you know it looks different in various uh, so so for example in the on the new york pitch showing intent there might not have been eight and over it would have been four and a half five and over right and how that looks intent and aggressiveness and proactivity doesn't always mean aerial it doesn't always mean high risk so those are the sort of things sort of things is from a coaching perspective you've got to keep you know hammering into your players you've got to keep teaching them and, and explaining to them what mm -hmm the positivity and aggressiveness that you're looking for, right? So um, if, if, if I mean, to be honest, I didn't watch the whole game of uh, Canada versus uh, Pakistan, but I did see a stat that Pakistan, I think, hit nine sixes and Canada only hit three, but Canada hit a, way more many boundaries. So which tells you, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's different ways of, of, of being positive. It doesn't always have to be aerial. It doesn't always have to be six. Um, and I think... Again, um, having looked at uh, uh, our batting today and even in the previous game, sometimes I think when the guys think they need to take the game forward, they always think aerial, you know. Um, it, mm. And that's not always the case. It's not always the case. So, yeah, that's, you know, it's a tough one to, 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 to talk about unless you've really been, you're there and you're in the environment. Yeah. Again, I can just talk, you know, from watching um, and sitting on the sidelines, which is easy. Yeah. Uh, and Anton, two, two points that you brought up that I think are really important here is one, that when we're talking about intent, which is a word people throw around, and I'm sure you've heard media throw around all the time, it has many different layers. And then 
paired with intent is execution, right? It, I can yeah. sw- I can go out there and swing a bat like I'm going to hit a six, but I'm not capable of executing that, right? So so there there has to be some sort of gauge where we understand what's possible, how we execute, um, how it comes off, how likely it is to come off. And yeah. I think it's easy to say we need to bat with intent and then we can flip around right in the South Africa match and say, oh, well, they should have buttoned up and, and just kind of knocked around singles and figured yeah. out the game plan. Right. Um, so there's a bit of there's 20, 20 hindsight from from fans there. The other thing that I think that you really touched on that was important is how this team can deal with pressure and also how we kind of view this team in terms of what they're trying to build towards, right? Um, and I think, I, and I'm curious, kind of thoughts on this. Estelle, I'll ask you because I don't want to put Anton in the in the firing line with this question. But how, what role do you <clears throat> think SLT plays in the way that um, cricketers mediate those outside influences? Do you think SLC has done a good job with that? Um, because, you know, it sort of seems to, to to go between not having access to the cricketers except on media days to then there's a long interview given where there's all sorts of information spilled and rumors released. What In, in your experience as a journalist in Sri Lanka, how do you feel that plays out? Yeah, access with the men's team is not actually that bad, particularly when it comes to like big tournaments and stuff. But I think when it comes to what we've been talking about so far, there's also an individual role to play, right? Like, um, I've been, I mean, I I scroll a bit on X or Twitter, right? And I've been seeing these um, quotes by Caitlin Clark, who's an up-and-coming WNBA star, right? And she's been talking about, whenever they ask her questions about, you know, have you seen stuff like, you know, people talking about how the other players don't seem to be too happy with, you getting all the attention and stuff like that. I think a key thing that she says is that she's not on social media, so she doesn't really see it. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm not saying players should not be on social media, not go on holiday and take photographs, whatever, right? That's That seems like a big criticism they seem to get for whatever reason. But I think it's important to find what works for you. And in her case, that probably works for her, right? Where she just stays off social media. Yep. Um, and so she doesn't see a lot of the kind of uh, talk chat that's around her so i think in this case um i don't know if i'm like answering your question on slc's role per se but i do think there's an individual's role there where you have to figure out what works for you hmm. so let's let's switch to something slightly more positive let's talk about the bowling effort um that the sri lankan side put in which i thought was fantastic so anton as a bowling coach Tell us what you saw, what you were impressed by, and and, and um, what you thought Sri Lanka did well in their um, in the second innings. Well, firstly, I think you know everyone, including uh, all the Sri Lankan players, would have thought when they came off at halftime that we that they definitely left a few runs out there. Um, but to show the fight and the, the the desperation in trying to win that game right to the end—that's all we can ask for as a nation, right? So. When you're watching your team perform, you've got to accept that, you know, someone's going to have to win at the end of the day, and it might not always be you. But one thing that you can always try and portray to your fans is that you are that you care and that you fight tooth and nail to get the victory. And I thought we did that tonight, you know. And so credit to the guys for coming out. Um, and they did it a, a, a against South Africa too, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I've, 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 seen, I've seen plenty of teams in that similar situation come onto the field and everything just falls apart because... You know, you're not happy with 70 runs on the board, and so, and so you shouldn't be. But I, th- I even thought in that game, they fought right to the end, and they showed a lot of character in doing that. And that'll only help us moving forward. Um, from a bowling perspective, I thought Nuan Tashara had probably his best game for Sri Lanka under pressure um, that I've seen uh, since I've been involved in the setup, which is a massive positive for us um, because we've got two guys now who have a point of difference with their type of uh, uh, bowling action. You know, Wanindu did really well. I think the one thing that uh, it's easy to say in hindsight, but, you know, we everyone's going to say, well, Dustin shouldn't be bowling that late in the game or whatever the case may be. But, the, you know, Wanindu rolled the dice and trying to break the game by bringing the guys, you know, the strike bowlers back a little bit earlier. Um, and it nearly worked. 
right? And it worked to a degree, but it nearly won us the game. So I don't think we should focus too much on that. Um, I think the fielding was good. I think it was an awesome catch by Mahish. I think the bowling was really good. Yeah. I think the way I think the way Winindu handled his um, his rotation of the bowlers was really good. Unfortunately, those four overs, you know, sort of cost us at the end where we where we had to make them up. Um, but again, that's the that's the role of the dice that you that you had to that you that you had to imply and um, defending those runs. But at the end of the day, it's very simple. We were a few runs short out in the middle. Um, other than that, I thought it was a very commendable effort from Sri Lanka. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think the effort has been there, right? As much as we want to be mad and upset, you can tell they were doing everything, both in the South Africa game and in the Bangladesh game, when they were bowling, even though they had subpar totals, to try to win those games. And they bowled with a lot of heart. You could tell it meant something to them, even when they were taking wickets late in the piece. They were, you know, Mahesh took that catch and was super excited by it. And and I think and you know, sorry, I have to I have to cut in there because you know, I, yeah. I jumped up off the couch and I was so happy for that guy because, I mean, Mahesh. Let's be honest, he's he's not exactly gifted with the, the John T. Rhodes uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. But he tries his utmost best in training and in matches. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. But I, I tell you what, that catch, technique-wise, under pressure, um, at night, what a catch. And I, and I couldn't be happier for a guy than Mahish because, mm. you know, um, if that goes down, you can only imagine what uh, the Twitterati are going to say yep. and everything else around it. And but, but, you know, those people don't really know what – what goes mm -hmm. into to taking that catch and how, you know, when everyone starts talking about your fielding capabilities or the lack thereof, how mentally that goes into your brain as well. So I think it was a superb effort from him. And I'm so chuffed. And, and, and uh, it seemed a very clean fielding effort. I didn't see very much in the way of sloppiness over, even though it was an intense game, right? Because that can kind of slip yeah. into, you know, you're trying to create runouts, you're trying to do anything you can. Yeah. I thought it was, very cleanly. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to be ultra ultra nitpicky and and finding ways where we could have changed the game, I think we missed three run out opportunities for direct hits. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, people can say, "Oh, we missed three run outs with direct hits," but I can tell you from from the analysis that I do, uh, you know, thirty percent anything from twenty to thirty percent direct hit ratio per game is like astronomical, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. and that's and that's for every team across across the board yeah. internationally so unfortunately tonight we didn't quite get those direct hits would they have made a change in the outcome potentially the last one i'm not too sure um yeah but yeah i agree with you i, th I thought it was a, a i thought it was a solid solid performance in the field capped off by a, a nice catch uh, by me yeah estelle what what did you make of the bowling innings any anything stand out to you yeah i think anton got it right right Manindu had no option but to go for his strike bowlers early on. And then, of course, you had to bring on Gasun or Angelo at the end. Uh, I just go back to the conversation we've had so many times on this pod, right? D does it make sense to play the eight batters or do you want another bowling option? Because it does seem like there might be a better quality cricketer sitting on the bench because you yeah. want to go with that eight uh better option right i i just to come back to dananjay de silva and we were critical of the way he batted i do think he has a role to play as a bowler in this tournament because we have seen a lot of mm -hmm. strips where you can use a lot of spin right and he's been he's i wouldn't exactly call him a part-time bowler he has been relatively better than a part-time option for Sri Lanka in the past so I do think he has a role to play in this World Cup as a bowler um, but it just it does doesn't feel right having a guy like Chamira sitting on the bench um, where you have tracks where maybe that back of the back of a length yeah. slow deliveries those type of things that he's so good at can make a difference particularly when you have two guys who are slingers who don't ex get as much bounce as a guy like Chamiro or even yeah. Devshan Madhushankar would, right? So is it something they need to think about again? Do they need to bring in the five, 
play with the five bowlers and really like play to Sri Lanka's strengths, which is the bowling, um, or persist with that eight batter lineup? Yeah, I think that's a, an excellent question because I was, as I was watching Bangladesh bowl and particularly um, Tosca and Ahmed hitting those that that sort of back of the length, I was thinking, oh, Tamira would be really fantastic on a pitch like this. Um, Anton, do you have any any thoughts about combination six five versus seven four? I've got plenty of thoughts, but they're, they're only they're <laughs> only thought they're only thoughts and uh, uh, opinions, and it's very easy to do it in hindsight. What I will say is that uh, you can clearly see what uh, the the idea was behind Sri Lanka's uh, choice to open with Dun and Jay because you know left hand, so the matchup would have would have spoken to that. But I think at the same time, if you look back all the way from the Afghanistan, or who did we play for? Uh, Zimbabwe, from the Zimbabwe series. Yeah. Angie always took the first over, sometimes bowled two in the power play, which then allowed your death bowlers to finish off the game towards the end. So when they brought mm-hmm. Dun and Jaya on today, um, I th- I, potentially that could have thrown a spanner in the works in, in terms of, you know, when do we bring Angie or, or Dasun on? I'm not sure. Um, mm. And also, you know, a guy like Mahish, again, this is just, you know, my opinion from a coaching perspective. You know, he's the number four T20 bowler in the world. He's done that by bowling a, a large part in the power play. Um, so, you know, he, if, if I would like to see him, con- you know, stick to that role as, as best, regardless of the matchup, left hand, right hand, doesn't matter. Mm. I think he's world class, you know. Um, and then that obviously gives you a little bit of, Playroom, uh, breathing space towards the end to to bring your death specialists back uh, back in. But yeah. I think, like Estelle says, and it's not just the the personnel that we have on on the field. I think sometimes by having too many options can also gl- bring uh, uh, a bit of muddled. You know, what do I yeah. go for? Do we do we stick to the matchups or do we trust the captain to make a, de- a decision on the field? So, you know, without going down the wormhole there too much. Um, because you can nitpick as much as you want. Uh, mm. I, th- I think the Wunindu did everything that he could. Um, yeah. And I think he made brilliant decisions by bringing back, you know, the, the bowlers to try and kill it off at the end. And geez, we nearly got over the line by doing that, you know. Yeah. So from that perspective, I think it was brilliant. Um, but unfortunately, we, like I said, if, if you want to, if you want to hit the nail on the head and just stop the conversation wherever it goes to, you just say, "Well, we were at least 20, 30, maybe even forty yeah. runs short on that wicket," and that's it. So, Anton, just a question for you as a bowling coach. <clears throat> uh, yeah. One thing that I noticed, uh, Patirana was he he seemed to bowl the Yorker less today than he usually does. Could, did you see any reason for that or anything that that? Um, made you think that was the re- there were anything in the pitch that made you think he avoided the Yorkers? Uh, I'm not sure, Adam. I, I think, you know, again, without having, with not being in the, in the team environment and sitting through the tactical meetings, they could have potentially seen, oh, this guy's got a weak spot just outside off or, you know, so we don't know what the, the narrative would have been and uh, to, you know, the message given to Matisha to bowl either Yorkers or not. I think, I think it was clear for Nuan to see that there was still a bit of swing for him. So the fuller that he bowls, the better, because, you know, that late swing sort of uh, gets the guys in trouble. Whereas yeah. Matisha, Matisha is less of a swing bowler. He's more of an impact pace um, and the difference in lengths, you know, short and uh, and Yorkers and stuff. So, but I think, you know, the, the, the area, the, the moment in the game there, yeah, it's tough. Like, you, you, you'd think that Matisha goes Yorkers when, when they're trying to, to, to up the ante, but a lot of the time they only needed six and over. So there's no need for them to go after those Yorkers. You know? they, they could just knock them around. So maybe they just said, well, let's keep, let's keep hitting length. Let's try and bowl them out or, or nick them off or something like that. So, um, yeah, I, I can't really comment on, on that because we're not, we're not in that environment. But yeah. I think that could put, potentially have played a role. Mm. And... One, one thing that I'll bring up, and again, this gets back to Anton's point about criticism. I'm seeing a lot of commentary saying that Hasaranga is a terrible captain. Uh, you know, he should be sacked. But I think it, it seems to me contradictory, right? Obviously, we saw how they did in the field. We saw how they bowled. 
and um, we, I, I thought they, they did really well. How much does, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, how much does Hasaranga as captain have to do with them not executing in the middle when they're batting, right? I think there's, there's just some frustration there because um, what, you, what you were saying, Anton, made me think Hasaranga did a very good job in the field trying with 125 runs to defend. Right. And to critique him because, you know, as you said, they're 20, 30, 40 runs short. That that's not fair. I mean, you could say, yes, maybe he could have contributed to more with the bat. Um, so we're going to turn to some questions from that we've gotten. Speaking of Twitterati, uh, we have some yeah. questions from the Twitterati. I'm going to try to weed out the ones that say, well, everyone should be sacked and everyone should be um, fired. But, well, I, uh, I, I once got a, I once got a message after the World Cup in India that if we if if from a guy that said uh, if I see you and your family out I'm going to bash you. <laughs> so it, it, it's all part of the it's all part of the game, isn't it? Ridiculous. So bring it on. Right? What are the questions? What are the questions? Yeah. So so one one kind of question is about what is the role that Wanindu has as a batter in this side, right? We've seen two kind of failures from him, and. Uh, should he be used as a floater? Or do you have any opinions on that? And this is one of the questions of if he comes in and loses his wicket quickly, does that kind of skittle the momentum that Sri Lanka has? Well, first and foremost, I think Wanindu is a superb batter. So uh, he can, you know, in my, in my opinion, in my mind, he can bat anywhere from four down to eight. <clears throat> um, we've, we've seen it firsthand how he can take down spin. Um, he's been used in that role yep. in the past. So what that then gives you, it give, as a coaching staff or as a, as a leadership group, it gives you the option of, you know, can we, can we use Wanindu in that role um, if given the right circumstances? So yeah, absolutely, I, can, I, I see him being able to play that role. It's, it's up to the, the players <clears throat> and I suppose the captain themselves in the match to make the call for that to happen. So, but again, like we said earlier, if the game was so easy, to say, oh, I'm going to go out there yep. and just be super aggressive and take this game away from them. Then, it, then everyone would do it, right? So, at least, at least the thinking is positive. At least the the idea is aggressive. Um, so, I think the plan is good. Execution probably not so much, and that's something that you can always live with and, and you can continue working towards. Yeah, and I think you're totally right here, Anton, because. You know, we, we saw Sri Lanka get bugged down in the middle overs against spin. And that's what Wainindu is trying to do, provide impetus, right? Of course, sometimes it's not going to come off. Um, yeah. Estelle, and remember, remember, the game of T20 is, you know, fraught with risk. So yes. it is a highly riskful game where you as a cricketer have to make uh, split second decisions around how much risk are you willing to take at that moment in time, given the situation, the type of bowler, the surface, the pressure, all that sort of stuff, you know? So yeah. it's not as easy as just sitting back and going, oh, you should have hit that for four. Or uh, if it was me, I would have tried to hit him over the, you know, over the offside because yeah. they had everyone up on the offside. It's not, it's not that easy. And as a batter, you've got to make those decisions, you know, out there very, very quickly. But that is the beauty of the sport. And I think from what we've seen so far in this World Cup, from a neutral perspective, it's been absolutely great and refreshing seeing teams like USA, Canada, Afghanistan, mm. all these guys putting everyone under the pump. Because yeah. let's be honest, the IPL was great to, to a point where we saw sixes and fours. But what it's showing you is that as soon as the ball moves a little bit, as soon as there's a bit of spin, as soon as the track is a little bit slow, it's going to help the teams and players that are uh, adaptive really quick. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to help the players and teams that that uh, see it as a positive rather than a hindrance. So instead of saying the, these conditions are are so crap, uh, you know, you yeah. should turn your mindset into well, how these conditions aren't great, but what but what can I do in order to maximize my my impact in this game so that we can be, uh, continue being competitive? And and I think that's what this World Cup is showing. Absolutely. Um, we have a comment about, we found out why playing so many all-rounders who aren't good at either won't work. Um, and so what do we think about, and this is again a question about the makeup of the team, and 
I think the role, uh, and, and we can kind of approach this question in two ways. What is the role of the all-rounder in T20 cricket and in pitches like this? And what are we looking for from a T20 cricket all-rounder? Because I think that's very different than, say, we're looking for a test match all-rounder or looking for a one-day all-rounder. Do you think that Sri Lanka's philosophy towards all-rounders is, is flawed? Or do you think it's something that they can, they can kind of come at, um, sort of are, are, have the right idea behind, but maybe aren't executing? I th- you know, from my perspective, um, it just shows you the value of how important an all-rounder is. Uh, we were actually yeah. talking at a, as a coaching group the other day at uh, the HPC around, if you look at... Um, Australia, I think, have four or five all-rounders. And what I'm, how I, how I see an all-rounder is that you can either make the team as a guy who bowls four overs, and you can make, and you can bat in the top five, uh, potentially top six as a batter outright, right? So if you can do both, if you can give four overs and bat in the top six, you are worth absolute gold. Now, you can go through the Australians' names. I think they had four or five. India played their previous game in New York with four all-rounders. Uh, England have got a few floating around as well. Uh, I think New Zealand have the most. I think they've got six or seven mm. in their in their side if they if they t- if they want to play that sort of lineup, <clears throat> and that gives you the absolute flexibility around picking then two out and out death bowlers or a bowler that swings the ball in the uh, in the in the power play, um, or picking up a, an extra batter. Um, now, having come from a New Zealand setup, a South African setup, and in an English setup and a Dutch setup. Sometimes in a generation you are blessed with all rounders. Sometimes in a generation, unfortunately, you're not blessed with all rounders. You know, um, and I think Sri Lanka is finding them. I think, for example, a guy like Ben Stokes or Glenn Phillips or uh, Mitch Marsh or uh, Maxwell, those guys, when they play, you know that you can get four overs and they can bat wherever you want them to bat. So there's absolute role clarity. Where I think, unfortunately, where we find ourselves in at the moment is that, yeah, we're, we're missing out on that on those types of options. So if I'm looking, if I'm looking as, a, as a youngster growing up in Sri Lanka, or if I'm looking as a, as a, as a, as a parent of a Sri Lankan, up-and-coming Sri Lankan cricketer, I would tell him or her, listen, make sure you can bat in the top five, and make sure you can bowl fast and and swing yep. the ball because your chances of playing for 10 to 15 years of international cricket are extremely high. What we see in Sri Lanka is we've got plenty of spinners and we've got plenty of batters. Um, but unfortunately, since uh, the emergence of Angie uh, as a youngster when he came onto the scene, you know, who are the other great all-rounders that Sri Lanka have produced mm-hmm. in the past? And, I th- and, and that's got nothing to do with the quality of the player. It's got nothing to do with uh, uh, coaching. It's just got to do, you know, with that, that's the type of cricketers that we are producing. I think at the at the moment we are yeah. producing good spinners and we're producing good batters, but we're not. Our conditions don't really suit fast bowling all rounders. And again, that's just my opinion, having come from England mm. uh, set up, from a South African set up, and from a Holland and a New Zealand yeah. set up, where there you you you're, you're forced to be a multi-dimensional cricketer. Whereas here, you're not because, you know, sometimes in, in 50 over cricket or in four day cricket, I've seen spinners open the bowling in, uh, in domestic cricket, you know. So yep. there's, no, there's no real benefit for a fast bowling all rounder here in Sri Lanka and, and, and absolutely not. But that doesn't mean that you can't try and become one because at what we are seeing at international level, you are worth gold. So yep. if, you're an up, if you're an inspiring up and coming cricketer, my message would be become an all rounder. You know, Anton, I, I was thinking two of those players you mentioned, um, you know, Glenn Maxwell, he was not a four over bowler when no. he came up, right? Um, Glenn Phillips, not a four over yeah. bowler when he came up. And I'm thinking about guys like Kamindu Mendes and Tarath Asalanka, who have actually quite a bit of bowling experience. That's a part of their game that I'm sure they're working on, but I think will be critical to kind of seeing Sri Lanka through, right? Because if you can say, you know, we have Charith batting in our top five, plus he can provide us that off-spin option that we were relying on DDS for, that just opens up more possibilities, yeah. right? For your for your lineup, for your squad. And I think, um, you know, someone like Chamaka Karunaratne, um, very talented cricketer, if he were to work on his, I, I think he's, he, he's ahead as a bowler now, but if he were to spend time 
as a batter trying to bat up the order, that would go a long, long way to getting himself in the team. Yeah. So I think you're totally right that these are skills, too, that can be developed at the international level. I think of even Aiden Markram, right? His off spin is 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 pretty canny, uh, and and they will turn to him. And even though he he did not bowl particularly, you know, certainly probably hasn't bowled as much as someone like Chara Thessalanka. So developing those those dual skills could be useful. Um, I want to ask one more question and then look ahead. So my my last question is going to be: Is this loss in some way good for us? in terms of hitting a reset button on our thinking and approach towards selection. Uh, this this commenter is noting that we've been exposed and that this should lead us to rethink how we approach T20 cricket. I know that's quite a negative comment, but um, maybe we can kind of spin it into what can we learn from a loss like this? Do you want me? me to go first, Estelle? Whoever wants to go on this one. Estelle, you, you take it away and then I'll, I'll, I'll cap it off. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's what we discussed early on in the pod, right, about kind of being sealed and understanding your roles and what your team, how you want to play as a team and sticking to that for a while until you either see success or failure and then making changes from that point onwards. Um, I don't know if you can say that it's a good thing because how I mean Sri Lanka have been have been since the 2022 Asia Cup victory haven't really had any big performances in tournaments right they they've had these similar issues with the batting and the approach repetitively so I don't know whether this one loss is going to change anything but I do think what we said earlier is really relevant in that you know, you have to shut out the outside noise, decide on how you want to go about things and try to give that your 100 percent and then see, evaluate in a bit and and see where you need to make changes and work according to that. Yeah, I think from my side, um, my first attention, you know, if I, again, if I was in that environment, my first attention would go towards the players, just making sure that they're OK, because... I can tell you, losing losing a game in, in a World Cup is not great. Uh, losing a game to Bangladesh in a World Cup is not great. Losing a game in a World Cup to Bangladesh that potentially puts you out of the World Cup is, you know, potential for disaster. So, my my first my first uh, point of contact would be just to make sure all the guys are okay and 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 making them feel safe in that environment and feeling that they are still loved and backed and because there's still plenty of cricket to be played and who knows what what can happen for the rest of the tournament. Um, I don't think it's a negative comment, Dom. Uh, Dom I think it's a, a, absolutely you're allowed to ask that question around, you know, um, losses are, are, are can be uh, beautiful platforms for, for new learnings, you know. So that's where the leadership group have to earn their salt and sit down and, and say, well, you know, is this a point in time where we do a pivot in our, in our tactical way of, of doing things? Or is this the exact moment where we say, no, stick the course, we keep heading, we keep trusting what, what, what we're doing, um, you know, but that's something that the, that the, that the think tank has to, to get around and, and, and obviously mm-hmm. try and come up with, with a game plan around that. As, as, as guys who just watch the game and as fans, we can just hope that, uh, that the, the correct decisions are made and then ultimately we've got to give the, the, the cricketers as, as much support as we can to go and execute those things out there. And if it doesn't happen, well, then, you know, and, uh, we've got to brush ourselves off yeah. and, uh, and look forward. But like I said, just coming back to my first thing, I think this is where you've, you've got to give, as a supporter, not a critic, as a supporter of Sri Lankan cricket, yeah. this is where you've got to sit down and go, you know what, I'm going to support these guys even more now and try and create a little bit of uh, calmness around the team and just say, Get through these last games. Try your utmost best to win them. You're going to have to win one of one of those games really big to to up your net run rate in case that comes into play. So I think we're going to we're going to see a team that's going to be forced to be really aggressive. Now, is that going to be is that going to help us? 
I think uh, hopefully it, it will. I think it can, absolutely, because I think it's going to give absolute clarity around the way that we mm. should go about uh, uh, about our cricket. So potentially now we're going to see some some fireworks from the boys and and hopefully we see them bounce back and, and really putting a few performances that we know that they can do. And as we've seen with this World Cup, who knows, anything can still happen. So yeah. it's, the door's not shut yet. Anton, you, you sort of anticipated my next question and, and you showed why you're a sought after coach, right? Because you you explained, OK, how how do the boys approach these last two games? Right. Because one of the sets of comments are, well, they should just go home. It's useless. Right. But it's not over yet. Right. We, anything can happen. We saw there's a number. This is a tight group. Um, Nepal and Netherlands are by no means easy victories for any of these teams. Um, and you could see other teams get to two losses. Um, there's a whole lot of things that can happen. And there's still two games to play. And we'll want to see our players show what they can do on the biggest stage, right? Um, and it's not gone our way so far, but I think it's critical to show that, you know, we're still playing these games. These games still have meaning. And we have to show what we have to show for all the hard work that we put yeah. in, right? Because they certainly have. Um, Estelle, what, and since Anton kind of anticipated this question, what are you kind of, what are you looking for in the next two games? What are you kind of trying to think about um, as we approach these two games, knowing that, you know, maybe that last game against uh, the Dutch isn't going to matter as much as we thought? Yeah, I think Anton got it right. Now there's clarity on what you need to do. You need to win the remaining two games and you're probably going to need at least one big win um, if if Netrun Red comes into the equation. So I think there's nothing nothing to lose right now, right? If if Bangladesh gets three wins or South Africa gets three wins or Netherlands or Nepal, whoever gets three wins and goes ahead of us, well, there's nothing to be done about it, right? But mm-hmm. what they can focus on is what's to come and winning the last two games and doing you know, whatever they've learned from the last two matches that they've lost, putting that into practice and, you know, giving their best effort. I think it's really valuable what Anton said in in terms of, you know, the support that teams the team needs. Because what we also need to understand is, like, I know we come on the podcast and we, we are critical of how they play, right? And we are critical about certain decisions that we think could, could have been take, done differently or, you know, things that they should have done or shouldn't have done. But it's also important to understand that, okay, no one goes into something like this aiming to do, to be bad, right? Yeah. Or trying to be horrible or make the bad decisions. Everyone goes out there with the intent of doing well. Um, so I think that is important to keep in mind if you are a fan or if you're a follower of Sri Lanka cricket, um, because it's, you have to also understand that there is an aspect, there's another team involved here, right? Yeah. And they have put in a good performance. Like if you, if you look at today, I thought Fizz was superb. Uh, Rishad Hussain was superb, right? And we have to give credit to those players yeah. as well. Similarly, South Africa, the way they went about things, I thought the bat- batting might have been even tougher when they came on to bat. But they, the way they handled things, there, there is credit due as do there as well so it's important to understand that the players also there is i mean no one's going out there with the intent of being bad um obviously there are things that can be improved and hopefully we see that improvement in the next two games um because it it can't be easy right we've had a terrible 50 over world cup um and a not so great t20 world cup before as well so it's not it's not great um it's probably not great being in that environment where you're losing uh, games that you think that you should be winning. So I just think that that support is important and it's important to look at what's ahead and see what we can learn from what we've done so far and give your best in the last two games because there's nothing much else that you can do to ensure that you make it. Now, the, the situation is kind of out of Sri Lanka's hands, right? It depends on a lot of other results. The only thing we can do is win the last two games. Anything else to add to that, Anton? No, I think I think it, I think it's been said. I mean, uh, one thing that I will probably add to that is is that I know, you know, personally, a guy like Wanindu is hurting right now because um, mm. he's a very competitive 
cricketer who loves playing for his country, just like everyone else in that team. But I'm talking about the skipper, uh, um, uh, you know, personally over here. And a guy like that, you know, these last two games is a is a perfect platform for him to to put his step forward and say, "Hey, boys, I'm the leader. Follow me," type thing. You know, um, put in a massive performance with the bat or the ball or in the field, um, and really put a stake in the ground that you know Sri Lanka is still there and that we're going down. Uh, if we had, if we were to go down, that we're going down with a with an absolute fight, you know. So I'm, I have no doubt that a guy like that is going to step up and take, uh, you know, take the change room and uh, the, the rest of the guys with him. So, but first and foremost, I think it's 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 going to hurt for every supporter, for every coaching staff that's there, for every cricketer that's in that change room. It's going to hurt, and absolutely, it should hurt. But you shouldn't, you know, it should hurt for couple of hours maybe maybe a day 24 hours and you've got to brush it off and you've got to and you've got to just get on your back on your bike again and and you never know one win we're one win away from from putting two or three great performances in a row and if you make it through to that next yeah. round i can tell you now people are going to be very very scared playing against uh, a wounded lion like sri lanka uh, in the next round if we make it through but first and foremost we've got to brush the, brush ourselves off from this loss and um uh, putting two massive performances against the Netherlands and, and Nepal. Great. So I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, we went on for a long time, but I think it was worth talking through that. I certainly feel better after hearing what Anton had to say. So please, if you made it to the, the end, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel. If you're listening on a podcast, give us a follow. So thank you all. And we will be back again after the Nepal match on Tuesday to tell whether we win or lose, whatever happens, we'll be there to talk about it. Thank you.